I just can't, I, I, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I mean, it's, whew, and I'm still, whoa, you know. Well, folks, if we're live, I, I just, uh, I, I still, can't, I just can't believe it. Like that, here I come in tonight. I, I mean, I mean, leave that, leave that out. Are we, how we doing? We all right? We're good, right? All right. In any case, uh, I came in here tonight, and um, I, we were just expecting, you know, and, and when you come in, you sit down, and one of the more recognizable faces in uh, Philadelphia, you're, 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 to be honest, your head's a little bigger than I thought it was, but, um, but in any case, to, to, you know, to, so I come in here, and I'm thinking, wow, I mean, this guy, right, this Carson Wentz, I mean, if, if WIP, if NFL Network, if ESPN knew that he was going to be here, I mean, everybody's been trying to get him to talk, and the fact that you decided to choose our venue to share with us, Scott, I just, I, I'm I, I flabbergasted. I don't know what else, I don't know what else to say. But so Carson, so Carson, anyhow, um, so you're here, and and you're, I guess you're here to tell us, you know, what, you know, what's going to be happening? Are you staying on the Eagles, right? I mean, like I, I, I heard that, like you may be going to to Chicago. You might be going to Indianapolis and the different coaches they have there, but I don't know, like, is it something that's already been settled? Like, what do you want to say to us tonight, right? Because I heard that, like, that, that you, you, it was like you're, you're arguing with Doug Peterson or not getting along or, or Howie Roseman may be the person, you know, but I don't want to be the one, like, putting words in your mouth. Like, I, you know, I don't ever like, I, you don't know me well, I don't ever like to be, like, the person that's dominating, so... So, like, just, but if you just let us, what is it you wanted to come and say? I mean, you know that you didn't have the greatest year this past year, right? And, and I, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you wanted to kind of just touch on that or if you're, but I, I really just wanted to get out of the way and have you share with us what you came to, to say here, right? So, because, I mean, it, it's, 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 uh, I mean, I, you know, a couple of your former coaches are on these other teams. Um, you know, people, one reporter says one thing, one says another, and everyone's wanting to know what you're going to say. So here we have you. We want to hear what he wants to say. So, I mean, whew, I just, I, so, you know, what are you waiting for? Like, because I, we're, right? I mean, we're, we're what, what, what's that? Why don't I talk now? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so, yeah. You know, I'm sorry. What, what did you come here to say to us? You know, the whole. I, I want to say like Eagles Nation is watching, but you know, it's really it's, you know, it, I, this is a church time, and it's and it is you know about that. But but we know you chose this, so yeah, yeah. I, so did you come to say something? Absolutely. What's that? I only came to say one thing. Here it is. Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. Wow, wow, he came here to tell us that. Dave, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to get any more out of him, but that, that's great to hear. Whew, let's move on. Fly, you can fly. Oh, no, we're not going to <laughs> Be still and know that I am God. Then the walk in, was like, what's going on? <laughs> Be still and know. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's 
Dave and Carol. Uh, you guys missed it. If you can hear me, if you have any trouble hearing us, please let us know. Not that we're going to be able to do a whole lot about it, but we'll try. <laughs> um, if you guys missed it earlier, those who you were watching home, Carson Wentz was here. He didn't say much, did he? Oh, he didn't. I didn't have no. much to say. Not a big I talker. To, I was trying yeah. to just stay out of the way and get no, him. I know. That's, that's your nature. You know, just. Um, <laughs> he wouldn't say anything. I yeah, well, I, the only thing I could say about him is, man, he is a solid dressing guy. He <laughs> really knows how to pick out clothes. Yeah, 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 you're right, Carlos. Ah, he's got good taste. That's I all know. I know. A little bit like you. I don't think he had orange sneakers on. Well, you know, the quarter zip sweaters, they're, they're really hot this time of year. Are you guys ready for some trivia? Yes, sir. Look at them. They can't wait. <laughs> they're, that's what they say, chomping at the bit? Yes. Is that the, is that the yeah, word? Katie almost moved up to the front row so she could answer questions, I could tell. <laughs> well, in honor of this past Sunday's festivities, I did a little Super Bowl Bible trivia. So all of our uh, questions and answers are going to have something to do with either the Super Yeah, unfortunately, Carson, you guys didn't quite get there this year. Uh, missed it by a bit, but it's only been three years, right, since we enjoyed a parade. That's right. On a day not too much different than today, actually, it was a lot colder. Back when I was 57. Way back yonder. <laughs> yes, when you were in your 50s. Yes, it's been a while. Um, so all the questions and answers have to do something with the game of football or the Super Bowl itself, and some may even have to do with those competing in it. So keep that in mind as you're, most of them are filling the blanks. Um, but keep that in mind as you're trying to search your, your Rolodex of your memory there for uh, what could be the answer. Um, all right, so first one, we'll start with an Old Testament one, all right? And this comes from the book of Isaiah. It's a prophecy against Jerusalem from the Lord, actually the king of, uh, in Judah. Um, but he says this to him, He will roll you up tightly like a blank, and then he will do this to, to you into a large country. So there's two different blanks there. All right, so first he'll roll you up tightly like a blank, and then he will do this to you into a large country. So Ooh. think about the game of football and the Super Bowl, and you might be able to call it the answer. He'll roll you up tightly like a, anybody want to take a shot at it? Like a ball, yes, Lisa. Thank you for having the courage to venture a guess there. He'll roll you up tight like a ball, and then if he has a ball, what will he do to you into a far country? Bro, yes. He's like the quarterback. Unfortunately, the ball was the king <laughs> that he was talking about. Don't want to be on the, uh, the, the wrong end of that I, play. I, I call, think right? Frank Borelli is reading from his uh, – Cuban translation, because he said, roll you up like a cigar. Yeah, well, it's close. That was you know, close. <laughs> yes. Yes. We all know what our mind goes to, right? So, yes. So, if you got that right, give yourselves seven points for a touchdown there. Good job. Um, all right, next question. So, this one, uh, Jesus is actually talking to Peter. If you remember, uh, they, they, they were... Uh, some of the Jewish leaders were criticizing Jesus for not paying the temple tax when he was in Jerusalem. So the, he's saying these words to Peter. He says, however, we don't want to offend them. So go down to the lake and do this uh, with your line. Open the mouth of the fish that you catch and you will find a large silver blank. Take it and pay the tax for both of us. So there's two blanks there. And you think about this in the beginning of most sporting events, mm -hmm. but especially big games. However, we don't want to offend them. So go down to the lake and blank in a line. Do this with your line. Open the mouth of the first fish you catch, and you will find a large silver blank. Take it and pay the tax Here we for go. both of us. Christine Entwist is on yeah, it already. Becky Scally. Anybody, Linda, you want to take Greg a shot Reich. at it? Okay, close. It's, that's what you would do, but what's the, what's the second part of it? Coin. <laughs> Right. So at the beginning of the Super Bowl, they always do. They don't necessarily drop, although nowadays they do. They, they used do to, just drop. The yeah, they just kind of drop it, but they usually toss it. Right. That's what it says to throw in a line or toss in a line. Cast drop in. I'll accept that. 
Um, but the idea is, yes, coin toss. That's how you usually start uh, this, the, to see who's going to get the ball first. So if you got that right, give yourselves um, 100 points, one for each yard. All right. So now we'll go uh, to the New Testament. All right. And um, this one for is. Each yard. I just got that one for each yard. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, from the Gospel of John. It says, uh, remember when Jesus, early in his ministry with the disciples, he uh, you know, told them one time that they caught no fish to throw their net on the other side. And if you remember, after Jesus' death and resurrection, he told the disciples to go and wait for him. When he didn't show up, they didn't know what to do. So Peter said, well, I'm going fishing, right? They didn't know what to do, so they went back to their old work. Um, so this is uh, during that period. Um, it says, the other disciples followed in the boat. This is after Jesus had told them to switch their net to the other side. And they, they caught a boat full of fish. So it says, they were followed in the boat. They were towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about this distance away. What does it tell us there? How far away were they, Dave? No, a little bit different. Think of think of our subject here. You'll 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 be able to get it. They don't throw stones in, you know, in the Super Bowl. Yes. Well, some people do, but they, they call them Eagles fans and their batteries <laughs> <laughs> or snowballs. Um, anybody else want to take a shot? No, longer than that. Hundred yards. Excellent. Good job. Um, Frank Borelli said three furlongs. That may be true, but when you translate that into um, Becky the Scally, common 100 weights yards, measured, George yes. Klein, 100 yards. Yes, in John 21, 8, in, in, all, in many versions, NIV, ESV, NAS, Mike Mullen, 100 yards. translate it to um, 100 yards. Now, they wouldn't have accused, of course, used that Caleb. measure. In the, even Caleb? Caleb is a rock. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, he didn't do so hot when he was here in person, I have to say. I don't know. There's something curious about that. Um, so they were about 100 yards away, 90 meters, and it might have been three furlongs. I, I'm not quite sure about that. All right, let's, so if you got that right, give yourselves, yeah, give yourselves a, a thousand points just because why not? All right, this is a quote from the book of Philippians, and Paul, Paul, when he wrote, you could tell Paul, he would have been, a, I think, a football fan if he was alive today because he always made sports analogies. Yeah. He talked about racing and boxing and, and, and using his body in yeah. competition, yeah. wrestling. He used a lot of sports metaphors. So this is one of those. He says this, I press on toward the blank to win the blank. Two different words. I press on toward the blank to win the blank for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Just like both teams in the Super Bowl were trying to do this. So he pressed on toward the, anybody want to take a shot at it? Some people goal. at home? What did you say? Who said it? Frank? Goal. The goal, yes. Press on toward the goal to win the the prize, right? Or, or in this case, the Super Bowl trophy, the, the Lombardi trophy. Um, <coughs> but anytime you compete in a sport, you play to win. And that's what Paul's making the comparison to. If you're going to if you're going to follow after Christ, then you play to win. You go for the prize, the upward call uh, of God, in, uh, for which he has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus in Philippians 4.13. So I some press... of you are saying finish line. That Elsewhere he does say, he, in other portion of Scripture, you know, running yes, toward run that. run the race that. towards the... Th th this actually from <clears> Philippians, <throat> he is he is kind of talking about a runner there, but I didn't. I took it out of context so it fit my, no. my category here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he pressed towards the goal to win the prize. So if you got that right, you won the prize and give yourselves another 5,000 points. All right, next one, number five. Think about this one a little bit, and this one only works in a New Living Translation, but I think you'll be able to, to figure it out. Uh, it comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 144. It's uh, a praise to God. He says, Open the heavens, Lord, and come blank. Then do this to the mountains so they billow smoke. So there's two different... Blanks there, but if you put them together, you'll get a, a football term that, that's pretty common. All right, I'll do it one more time. Open the heavens, Lord, and come where? Then do this to the mountains so they billow smoke. You think about direction for the first one and then um, an action for the second one. So open the heavens, Lord, and come here, and then do this to the mountains so they billow smoke. Anybody want to take a, take a shot, Dave? Down touch. Down touch. If you flip them around, you get touchdown. touchdown. Yes. Hey, there you go, Dave. First touchdown we scored tonight. All right. Good job. Um, yes. Touchdown. Open the heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so they billow smoke. One day 
He's going to do that. Good. We got Ju Caleb and Joy and yes. Penny and Becky added exclamation lot of, points. A lot of Good people job. got that. Touchdown. Marge. So I'm going to feel generous. Give yourselves uh, 16,000 points. I'll give you two touchdowns and two two point conversions for that. Man. All right. Multiplied by 1,000. This one, somebody <laughs> that's sitting near me may be able to pertain to this one. But uh, I don't know if this ever happened in your playing career, Pastor Vince, but it tells us in Proverbs, a hot-tempered person Ooh. must pay the blank. If you rescue them, you'll have to do it again. <laughs> so think about Super Bowl or football. A hot-tempered person must pay the blank. Rescue them, and you will have to do it again. So think about... Jeez. And usually this one's 15 yards. Yeah, well, for you, yeah, you might even got a game misconduct. <laughs> <laughs> Sent you to the showers early. Frank? Penalty. 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 Yes. You'll have to pay some, some uh, versions say pay the price, but some say the penalty. A hot-tempered person must pay the Becky, penalty. Becky, George, yes. Caleb, Penny, Joy. It's usually Joy, a 15 yard or front sportsmanlike contact <clears> when, you get, when your temper gets a hold of you. But good job, everybody. So give yourselves 20,000 points if you got that. Oh, yeah, make it 21. We'll do an even three touchdowns. Michelle, Karen, Christy, boy. Everybody was on that All one. All right. Mike. This one, I'm looking for three different <clears> blanks, <throat> but they kind of go together. And if you think of, now this year's Super Bowl was a little bit more subdued, right? With COVID, with the restrictions, you were told not to gather in big groups. But normally, on a Super Bowl Sunday, a lot more of this stuff takes place. It's actually in 1 Corinthians 10, and Paul's referring to the book of Deuteronomy when, when, when God, or through Moses, was talking to the Israelites. He says, Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to do this and to do this, and then they rose up to do this. So there's three different actions mm. there. They're all action words, verbs. The people sat down to do this and this. Think about what you normally sit down to do at a table. And then they rose up to do this. And I think it's a good analogy for what happens in a lot of homes in America on Super Bowl Sunday. So there's three words I'm looking for. Anybody want to take a stab at any of them? Tom? Drink, drink is one. So what goes with drink? Yes. Yeah, so you eat and drink, then they rose up to be merry. be merry, or another way to say that? Celebrate. Celebrate. Play. Actually, one version I looked up, the CSB said to party. <laughs> um, I don't huh. think that was in the Hebrew or the Greek, um, but... The idea is to play, to, to, to be frivolous, to, and in this case, obviously, their play led to uh, debauchery and idolatry, and it was the wrong guy was condemning it. Um, and, and some people, if you do too much of the eat and drink and playing, then you're going to tend to stray away from God's Word. So Paul was calling us back to, to the Word of God. But yes, eat, drink, play, that's uh, five yards each, 15-yard penalty, 15,000 <laughs> points for that. All right, so now we'll keep going here. Um, this one, if you think about the actual teams that participated this week, you might be able to get this one easy. All right, this comes from the book of Genesis. It says, and the first, talking about babies being born, the first came out this all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Andy, I mean Esau. Um, so th what's, the, what's the missing <laughs> word in there, right? The first came out this, and all over he was like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Or, Andy, you might fit the same thing if you know who I'm talking about. Anybody want to take a, take a shot there? Dave? Red? Yes, Red. Yes, even big Caleb red. got that one. And Becky? Yes, Big, big red. red. That's yeah, what they call yes. Andy Reid, who used to be the coach of the Eagles. <clears throat> He's gone on to some success there in Kansas City. But, yes, both Red and Harry. If you've seen him with his COVID beard, he was, he was definitely very Esau-like. Um, so if you got that one right, give yourselves 22,000 points. Next question. This is from the Old Testament. <clears throat> All right, again, think of who participated in, in the most recent game, and this will help you with this one. Because this one's not an easy one, but if you, know, if you know who played, it'll be easier. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter these over the wide earth. All right. He will execute judgment among the nations, Talking about the Lord, this is talking about the end times, filling them with corpses. He will shatter these over the wide earth. And it's not talking about Tom Brady and what the Buccaneers did. But something else is missing there. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want, want to take a shot at that? 
Frank Castle. I don't know who that is, but he, he's throwing a uh, he's throwing a clue in there. I don't know if he's answering the question or not. Anybody know what the blank is there? He will shatter who over to wide earth. I'll give you a hint. It wasn't the Buccaneers. Chiefs, yes. Carly Klein got that. Yes, Carly, jumped good job, in there. Carly. All right, yes. Chiefs is actually Bob in the Rafferty. Bible. Psalms 110.6 in the ESV and several other versions. It talks about chiefs or leaders or, you know, the tribesmen, the people who were accountable uh, for their country or their nation. He said he's going to shatter them over to wide earth. And if you watch the game on Sunday, that certainly did happen to the Chiefs. So if you got that right, give yourselves uh, 27,000 points. All right, this one is a little bit tougher. Um, but again, if you think about who participated, you might be able to get this one. This is more of a particular person. It's from a prophecy in Daniel when, when the Lord's showing him all the kingdoms that are going to follow. Out. He's talking about Babylon and then the kingdom of Persia, and then he showed them the other kingdoms that would follow, follow after all the way up into modern day and the coming of the Messiah. So in this prophecy in Daniel chapter 8, he's talking about a particular person, but he makes an analogy to, to something else. He said, As I was considering, behold, a male blank came from the west across the face of the whole earth without touching the ground, and the same word, blank, had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. Then you jump to verse 8, and it says, Then this blank, same word, became exceedingly great. So there's three blanks, and it's all the same word. That's good. Okay? Good so one. if you think about who participated, you might be able to get this one. It's I said, I was considering, behold, a male, one of these, came from across, uh, from the west, across one, the face of the whole specific. earth. Yeah, it's an animal, without touching the ground. Carly Klein got and it. And the... Same animal had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. Vince. And then this animal became exceedingly great. Uh -huh. Anybody want to take a shot? A Alma? A goat. Yes, a goat. Yes, it was uh, talking about actually John Alexander Kidding. the Great in the prophecy. Yeah. But uh, if you're familiar with sports terminology, they use the word goat to talk about the greatest of all time. And as much as I dislike to say it, Alma may disagree with me. Tom Brady has definitely established himself to be the most... <laughs> well, yeah. Tom, I thought Alma was. A, I thought you were a New England fan, right? Yeah, that's, that's right, right. That's right. That's oh. right. Her loyalty that's right. lays with the team, not that's with the right. person. I like that. I respect that. There we yeah. go. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. But he he didn't do it this time. But yes, the greatest of all time. You can agree or disagree, but he, he has what eight? Now? I still think Wentz is if he's still around. Now, seven so. uh, seven championships that he's won. That's uh, that's pretty hard to beat. All right, um, last question. All right, and this one, uh, think about, uh, well, just, I'll read it, and then you can figure it out on your own. It says, they will cry to the Lord because of oppressors, and he will send them a savior and a one of these. He will deliver them. And then another verse in Jeremiah says, but the Lord is with me like a one of these, same word. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. Think about when they handed the trophy to Tom Brady, they called him the, and not just him, but the, the whole team. That's, that's, a, that's the, a good clue. They cry to the Lord because of oppressors, and he will send them a savior and a blank. He will deliver them, but the Lord is with me like a one of these. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. This is a tougher one. I'll take many answers, but there's one specific one I'm looking for. It's found only in the New American Standard Version. That's why I'll take other answers. But if you think about it, uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago that Nick Foles was standing up there. They were giving him the trophy, and, you know, they had a parade for the Eagles because they were the... Say it. The champs, right? The champion. Right out of that's, that's right. That, Excellent. A famous psalm. We are the champions. Yes, yes. My friend, somewhere. Yes, I believe the... it's in it's Hezekiah <laughs> seven. <laughs> yes, but I like I, I chose that to end with because it talks about our Savior who is a champion and He will deliver them. Right, the Lord is with me. He's currently with me. Not someday. He's currently with me like a champion. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. That's still future for some of us. Some of our persecutors seem like they have the upper hand, but one day they're going to stumble and not prevail. And that word champion can be translated great one, like Gretzky, mighty one, 
defender, leader, mighty, terrible one. And not, not that he's a bad leader, but terrible in the sense of uh, fearsome or awe-inspiring. Mighty, awesome one, great warrior, the dread warrior, the violent warrior. We don't often think of the Lord Jesus that way. And the awesome, mighty one. That is who our champion is. So if you got that right, give yourselves, what, what number Super Bowl was this one? 55, was it? 55,000 points if you got that right. Then you add them all up, and you're still over the salary cap, so you have to cut somebody. All right. There you go. Thank you, my friend. Yes. Good job. Sorry, I took a little long with that. Oh, that was that's okay. There's a that's, lot more football ones. Yeah, I, yes. had to, I had to get rid of more than I kept. <laughs> well, we, uh, we um, had a – we are uh, – one of the things that we've been up, keeping you updated, you folks here – great you're here you hear us all as well we keep trying to get the microphones figured out and one of our tech team people did an investigation and evidently right when we were starting out with these microphones facebook came out with an update and on one of the message boards tech message boards there's a lot of people who were saying the update ruined so that we have a certain way one one person's tip was wait until you're already on facebook so we began with Dave singing with just the phone mic, and then we inserted our mics. Hopefully, that uh, has made the difference. We'll listen to it later, obviously, and see. I was reading Luke chapter 1 today, and in Luke chapter 1, um, I, I, I've, I, I probably have read the Gospel of John more than any other book in the Bible. Many of you, you know, read the Bible through in a year. I haven't done that a lot, reading the Bible through in a year. I've done it, but... I'm I'm one who has, you know, I, I'll I've probably read the Gospels, the Book of Acts, the Psalms, Proverbs. I've probably read them through multiple times more than just the in, entire Bible. All Scripture is inspired. We know that, but we also recognize that there are some chapters in Leviticus that aren't going to strike you as much as, as Proverbs or, or listening to the words of Jesus. And you know, if you've been with me for the years that I've been pastor here, I've kind of tried to emphasize that. Keep, keep reading about Jesus. Keep, keep yourselves in the whole counsel of God, but in those Gospels and seeing how beautiful He is. And so I, I'm, I'm going through the Gospel of Luke again. I was just reading it this morning. And, and when Zacharias, when he gets word that he's going to have a son... And when, he's, when it's told to him in verse 14, right? And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. This great news of what's ahead. Oh, fantastic. He's going to be great. He will turn back many of the sons of Israel, verse 16, to the Lord, right? Oh, this cause. And, and Zacharias is, is um, celebrating. And then later when he's uh, prophesying and just praising the Lord, declaring this truth about God, what do we read that he says in verse 76, kind of to his, to his own son prophetically, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give to his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, with which... The sunrise from on high shall visit us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. I could preach a sermon on that because I've been sitting on those verses for a couple of days. Just that beauty of those words because of the tender mercy of our God, which with the sunrise from on high shall visit us. The darkness turned to light. Wow. But when we read those verses, there's something we don't read about John, right? We're reading about, oh, the joy that's ahead. Oh, your son, John the Baptist, is going to be great. He's going to turn people to the Lord. Oh, there's much rejoicing. But what do we not read about John the Baptist there? We don't read that he's going to get thrown into prison and have to sit there in a horrible prison wrestling with what's happening out there. We don't read that he's going to be beheaded, right? That's not, that's not part of the story there. It's not part of the news. And when you think about that, oh, Zacharias, what was ahead as he's looking at it? Oh, my son. 
being that he was a man of faith, I, I think that if the words were included, and by the way, he is going to suffer a violent death, I trust Zacharias still would have said, I rejoice in what's ahead for my son. But I, I bring that passage up because it got my mind just kind of, you know, thinking as we sing, oh, God is so good, how good our God is. But in this moment, he's rejoicing, but there's no mention of some of the pain, right? We are never told in Scripture that everything that happens to us as Christians is good. We aren't. We're never told that everything that happens to us is a good thing. That every moment we experience is a good moment, right? As a matter of fact, we are prepared by the scriptures to anticipate that there will be bad things that happen. And stay with me if you're thinking of verses what we're saying, that everything that happens in life is a good thing in and of itself. No, as a matter of fact, we're told that there will be tough things that occur, right? Right from the beginning in Genesis chapter 3, when the kind of the penalties of sin are being laid out upon the, the human race in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16, and we read to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband. Uh, what it, it, You may say, oh, the pain is worth it to have a child. Oh, sure. But is the pain good? Is that good to, to be in pain, right? Uh, you know, but, but that's not even speaking about evil. That's just speaking about some of the suffering that we will experience as human beings. Later, he says to Adam, verse 17, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles, verse 19, by the sweat of your face. And then what? You're going to die. See, it's it's what Job is tasting and experiencing in Job chapter 14 when Job says what about life in Job chapter 14 and verse 1 man who is born of woman is short-lived and full of turmoil says elsewhere a verse that Pastor Mitchell used to quote a lot even as the sparks fly upward Man is, man is born for trouble, right? But it talks about life has turmoil. Life has turmoil. It has difficulty. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, right? Ecclesiastes chapter 2, when we get to verses 22. Where am I here? Ecclesiastes chapter 2 Verse 22 and 23. For what does a man get in all his labor and in his strivings with which he labors under the sun? Because all his days his task is painful and grievous. Even at night his mind does not rest. This too is vanity. And you may find yourself saying, wow, I, oh, I feel like my life is a little better than what I'm reading in some of these verses. And the fact of the matter is, for most of us in America, our lives are much better than what many individuals have experienced throughout human history, right? But in John chapter 16 and verse 33, what did Jesus say? He said th that what? That in this world you will have trouble. You'll have tribulation. But he says, don't worry, because I've overcome the world. Now, remember what I said. I said we are never told in Scripture that everything that happens to us is good. When someone murders another person, that is not a good moment. That is not a good thing. Yet even though there will be bad moments in life, every moment in life, what Scripture does promise us, is made meaningful for a believer. Every moment in life is not good, but our good God is in every moment, right? And that's what makes all the difference for us. Every moment in life isn't good, but 
In every moment, our good God is there to meet us and to work in it. And so he elevates every moment for us. And that's why when I said initially that we are never told in Scripture that everything that happens to us is good, some of you may have thought, wait a minute. You know, you know maybe you didn't, but, but doesn't Romans 8.28 say something about that? And yes, it does. Uh, it says something about it. But it doesn't disagree with that statement because Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So this moment that may not be a good moment, my good God meets me in it and can cause that moment to work together for good, right? That, that he elevates every moment in life. The mundane, the monotonous, they're all elevated because every moment, whether I'm experiencing good or bad, the fact is in every moment, my good God is in that moment with me. And that's why the Apostle Paul then says to the Thessalonians, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And, and I, I personally feel, God isn't telling me to be thankful that a drunk driver ran over someone. He's saying to be, give him thanks in the midst of these moments because my God who is good is in the moment and can use the moment, can somehow elevate the moment. And so the difference maker is God being in the moment with us. Humanly speaking, there are evil things that happen and they can happen to us. Uh, but, but our good God is in the moment. My initial thoughts, well, I remember when I first, you know, years ago, Romans 8, 28, my thoughts of that verse were always like in heaven someday. What I mean is they were Romans 8, 28, God can make all things work together for good. In other words, everything eventually in the end is part of the recipe. And in heaven, it all is, come, you know, it, we, we, it all works out for the good. And that was my initial thoughts of it, that it was kind of this long-term eternal verse. And the reality is, listen, there are events that I can't even, I couldn't even talk about. Events that we may read about that I, 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 I couldn't even imagine them happening to someone that I love dearly. Because in my mind, I would think the only way I could ever think about that event in the light of Romans 8, 28 would be eternally. In other words, the only way I could ever find any purpose in that is when I was with the Lord and, and, and it's all over and, and somehow because it's so painful. But there are many things that I believe it can be spiritually invigorating for us to stop and say, wait a minute. Yes, Romans 8, 28 eternally in the long run. But Romans 8, 28 in life now, when I look at it and I say, wait a minute, I believe it, that God can make this moment in time to work together for good, not just for all eternity, but in this moment and in my life, because he is in the moment. I think even sometimes I think someone that might say, I, 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 I can't see any good in this at all. And I never will until I'm with the Lord someday. What are they saying? I still am trusting him. That, 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 that tremendous pain they're suffering that, that the good God meeting them in it is already producing something good for his glory because even though they're in so much pain, they're saying, but I know I'll be with him someday. You know, by and by, when the morning comes, you know, I'll understand it better by and by. But I think Romans eight twenty eight can be invigorating when we stop and say, no, but in the moments along the way, hey, today, what did you go through today? What did you experience? What did you fly past? What did you... God was in every moment. And in those moments, he is working in them and he's elevating those moments. 
And I think about that when I, I, I think again about, I know I preached on this, I think, recently, but Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. I think I might have shared this recently on a Wednesday night. I, I, but Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. When I say recently, it could have been before COVID. Who knows? But, <laughs> but Philippians 1, 6, we reread what? Yeah. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Again, in our minds, we can look at that and say, eternal, long term, when I'm with him, I'll be perfected. But what is it that God already began in you? What's it say there? He began what? A good work. It's already good what, what he's doing in your life each step of the way, right? Because it's the good God who has taken me. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus good works that were there for us to, to walk in them, right? It's, it's just that, that sense of we don't always see it. We see, our, we see our weaknesses. We see our struggles. I've referred to before, what, oh my goodness, I was in college when I got Chuck Swindoll's book, Three Steps Forward, Two Steps Back. And I, and I thought, boy, isn't that the truth about our Christian life? But often it feels like what? Two steps forward, three steps back, <laughs> right? Because we're so aware, you know, everybody else is growing and this and that, but, but it's because we're so aware of our difficulties. But to stop and say, wait a minute, the good God who has taken hold of my life, he was with me in that moment when I stumbled and fell. And so he can take it and bring good in the midst of it, in that moment. It's not just when it's all put together at the end. And my daughter Natalie actually kind of uh, stirred these thoughts in my mind as well. I, she was, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know if, if Natalie is on here, but I, I think she was listening to Judah Smith. Uh, 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 that, uh, he was uh, preaching or, or his radio. Uh, it may not have been him. But, sh but sh talking about just how we see that unfold even in creation, right? Because if you look at creation back in the beginning of Genesis, right? Genesis chapter 1, and we read there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning one day. Creation's done? No. You know, I say, God created everything and he said, that's good. No. All he's created so far, there's so much more to come. But God sits back and says, this was a good moment. This was a good day. Because I was in the midst of it doing my work, right? We can kind of move on and you get to uh, uh, verse, just jump ahead to verse 12, right? And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning a third day. It was good. But what was that vegetation for? I mean, it brings God glory just by... But what was it placed here for? It was placed here for animals and human beings to be eating it. They're not even here yet. And God says, that's good. See, you may be a, a, a college student. and uh, Can't wait till I have my degree and I'm finally doing something with it. You're, you're not at day six yet of creation. You're in day two or day three. God's doing his good work. Hey, you passed, you know, chemistry. It's good. <laughs> Particularly since I never took it, you know, because that was, you know, I, I, I stayed away from that, right? But, but, um, but the, just that sense of good, hey, you may feel like, well, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, you know, gone a hundred days without ever being selfish. 
All right. Did you make it through today? <laughs> you know, how about the last hour? That's good, right? It's, a, it's good what God is working and doing in you. And to be able to realize that, that it's that, that journey, that process, right? I, I think about Matthew in Matthew's gospel when Jesus is having a moment with Peter. And in Matthew chapter 16, right? And Jesus is talking to the disciples and he says, who do people say that I am? And they're saying, some people say John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah. He says, who do you say that I am? Verse 16 of Matthew 16, Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjota, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. What does Jesus say? Good. You see, what's still to come for Peter? What's a big thing that's still to come for him? He's still going to deny the Lord three times. But Jesus doesn't say, I'm not, until we get past that denial, until we're, until I'm feeling, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be affirming you. No, Jesus says, Peter, in this moment, blessed are you, good, God has met you in this moment and has revealed this to you. Good. And, and, and allow yourself that sense with the Lord that, you know, so often, you know, I, I sometimes, you know, I, I, listen, I know it's our human nature, but I may say to somebody, oh boy, you know, I, I want to just tell you, I, I was watching you there and uh, you, you, you really kept your composure. You really kept your testimony in that moment. And what do people often say? Oh, you don't know how many times I've blown it. Oh, because it, it's our, I, I, yeah, okay, I'm not talking about it every other time. I want you to know, good, that God in that moment gave you victory. It, it, it's not only good if you never lose control again. It's good that, that because the good God is working in our lives in the midst of us. And I think when we look at the events of Peter even denying the Lord, I think when we get to John chapter 21, right? And, and uh, in what is it? Verses 15 to 17, I think in there when Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? You know, I love you, Lord. Do you love me? Three times. I, I, I believe Jesus is saying, hey, Peter, you know that I was in that moment. You know, if I asked you what's one of the worst moments of your life, you would say, when I denied you, I had thought that I had come so far and I denied you three times. That was one of my worst moments. And Jesus is showing Peter, you know that God was still there in that moment to take that moment and to use it for you to taste this moment in an even richer way. Like the Apostle Paul says, somehow it's my sin that has caused me to taste the grace of God in a deeper way. Do I sin so that I'll taste grace more? No. But it's what? In that moment. In every moment. Every moment in life is not good. But our good God is in every moment. And that's why in every moment I can have in my mind, what? That, that God, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father who is in heaven, whom there's no variation, right? He's always the good God that meets us in the moment. And it allows us as Christians to be honest, right? We'd be, we, like, we could sit by someone's side and say, listen, what, what happened to you? That was evil. And God is not the author of evil. And, but he is the good God. That yes, he could have prevented this evil from touching your life. But he's chosen to meet you in it. Our good God. Whew. Oh, what a difference it makes. It allows me not to ever, you know, I wake up. I don't have to be afraid. Oh, I'm afraid of where this world's going. Why? Because 
could, could we be dealing with something? But there's people in this world, brothers and sisters in Christ, who are already dealing with that kind of stuff. They're already suffering tremendous hardship and starvation and imprisonment. God's still good. And he's meeting them there. And he'll meet us. Lord, I just thank you. Thank you, O Father, for meeting us with all of your goodness in every moment. Oh, Lord, you, you change everything. That's why the psalmist says, you have turned my grieving into dancing. You have replaced my sackcloth with garments of praise. Thank you, Lord. It's what you can do. It's what you can do. Help us to have that in our minds in every moment. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, I want to look at the prayer sheet here and uh, just very quickly and see uh, if you have a prayer request that you want to uh, bring up for us. Uh, bring that prayer request up here now and I'll see it. We do want to, uh, we've been praying for Danielle Warner, uh, Joyce Baker's daughter, Danielle, Joyce and Reggie Baker's daughter. Uh, and Danielle has an important doctor's appointment on the 16th, which is next Tuesday, uh, talking about stem cell transplant. So be praying for uh, Danielle uh, and for that meeting. We thank the Lord that she's, her numbers are up, but they need to make a decision on the next step in her treatment. Linda Letirzo had her uh, double mastectomy yesterday, and we thank God it did go well, but certainly there is recovery, and we thank the Lord for surrounding her in his uh, care, just reminding her of, of the beauty that the Lord uh, brings to each of us as his children. For Lois Earwood, we've been praying for Lois. Keep praying because uh, Lois, a week, a week ago, she went, she had a hole in her eye and the doctors basically said, we're going to put some drops in for two weeks. But if the hole doesn't close, they're going to have to do surgery. So we're praying that when she goes back in a week, that hole will have closed. So be praying for that for Lois Earwood. Uh, we celebrate the birth of uh, Henry Graber to Rachel and Jake Graber. Uh, some of you remember my good friend, Pastor Al Graber and his wife, Kathy. Uh, they are Jake's parents. And of course, my brother Dan and Sister Nancy are Rachel's parents. And so all of them have become grandparents again. So we rejoice with that. And we rejoice with the Cranefeld family because uh, Bob and Tina have become grandparents again through their uh, son, Ben, and his wife, Teresa. They had a son, Thomas Evans. So we uh, pray for them. Uh, Jackie Jordan, um, we got word, has been battling cancer. Lost a lot of weight in his week. So be praying for Jackie Jordan. For Ruth Griffith, we're continuing to pray for Ruth. Uh, God has blessed her with many years, and she's blessed us with those many years. And and uh, we pray we get to continue to enjoy her, her smile in the future. But she is on oxygen, so be praying for Ruth. Be praying for Caroline Highland. Had her torn ACL, and uh, that's a long road ahead for her. So we want to continue to be lifting her up to the Lord. Our missionaries of the week are the Berbas, Corey and Diana Berber, Berba. <laughs> And uh, there with the Romanian Orphan Ministries. And uh, we thank the Lord the way he's provided for them. They've had a, they had a storm this past year that destroyed a lot of their garden. And they had other things that happened. But the Lord continues to bless their work. So be praying for their work there. Any prayer requests you have here with us tonight that you want us to remember as well? Yeah, Dave. Okay. He's got such a witness um, online and uh, personally with people and the doctors because he's just like, we all, we all don't know when we're going to die. And I just know that I have a time limit now and it makes it a little bit more pressing. But he's just, you know, leaving it up to the Lord. Lord, you, you, you do what you will in my life. Help me to be a witness for you. He's a pastor. He does a lot of things. He goes off in the summers. 
His first name again, Dave? Wes. Wes. So be praying for Wes. Wow. Also, I see my son uh, did mention in here that, uh, yes, our, our next grandchild, by the grace of God, is due in, in two weeks, little baby girl to Vince and Katrina. So we're trusting the Lord for that. We've got plenty of other ones that are expecting. And with days, uh, you know, uh, those who are also looking toward marriage, there's a lot of neat things, you know, in, in uh, ahead in this year for those in our church family. All right, uh, let me uh, uh, close us in a word of prayer. Almighty God, we just want to thank you that we can mention these names and we can list them and uh, we can be able to focus our attention on these individuals. Lord, we thank you for your care. Thank you that you know what each and every one of these individuals is going through, Father. Oh, we thank you that you're you're right in the moment with them. And we do pray for protection, for healing, for health. We pray for jobs, Lord. We pray for uh, personal situations, the unspoken requests that are mentioned here. Lord, we lift them all up to you. We know that you care about each life. We just pray that they might sense your comfort with them. I pray especially again, Lord, for dear Michelle, uh, Fox down there in Florida and just as she uh, is uh, just one situation after another seems to pile uh, on her physically I pray for her and Jonathan and we just pray that you would uh, give them just that joy of, of one day at a time and so we commit all of these to you Lord we thank you for uh, Kay McDonald as well for that she's recovering with her eye surgery we pray for that uh, to go with no setbacks as well. So we commit all these prayer requests to you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Well, um, before we uh, do in... Oh, wow. We uh, Looks like we have... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get giddy again because uh, we do, we do want to make sure... Yeah, before... I mean, this is more important. Ladies' Bible study is canceled for tomorrow. We want you to know about that. Ladies' Bible study is canceled for tomorrow. We do have some potential snow. But uh, before we sign off, uh, I, I, you know, I, I was trying to get you to make an announcement earlier. Is, is that, I, 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 have, you, have you cleared it with your agent? Are you going to tell us something? It doesn't matter. I've, uh, I've made a decision. I've made an offer. And I'd like everyone to know where I'm going to be playing next year. I'm he's going to be telling us where he's playing. I'm sorry, Carson, where he's playing next year. I am going to play 